All right, thanks for watching. And from the producer of How to Show Something is a Subspace, let me show you today how to show something is not a subspace. And let me remind you, first of all, of the definition of a subspace. So H is a subspace of Rn. So we'll do Rn this time. There are more abstract vector spaces. But well, that's like for when I teach more advanced linear algebra. So H is a subspace of Rn. If, but in terms of the de definition is exactly the same. First of all, it has to have the zero vector. Second of all, it has to be close under addition, which means if U and V are in H, then U plus V is in H. And lastly, if u is in h, it's interesting, it's grammatically incorrect. It should be u are in h, but no, u is in h and c is a real number, or scalar, then cu is in h. And you have to understand a subspace uh, is a very strong property. All those three things have to be true. And in fact, let me show you three examples that show you that uh, one of those properties is false. So let's start with the first non-example. And by the way, why am I doing non-examples? It's because I feel you really understand a concept by the counterexamples, just like you appreciate that you're healthy when you're not sick, right? So, uh, so let's first do the first non-example. For example, let's take the line y equals to x plus 2 in R2. It's a nice subset of R2, but the question is, is it a subspace? So it looks something like that. y equals to x plus 2. Well, let's see. Turns out neither of those properties are true, but the most important one that's not true is it does not have the zero vector. Notice the point zero, zero, or the vector zero, zero, is not on it, because zero doesn't satisfy y equals to x plus two. So zero, which is zero, zero, is not in it. And this is sort of the first property. That's why it's not a subspace. So very important, before you even want to check something is a subspace, just mentally check if the zero vector is in it. If it's not, already you can say, oops, it's not in it. It's not a subspace. All right, next non-example. You might like, okay, well, that was easy. The zero vector is not in it. Let me show you now a prop, uh, case where the second pro the first two properties hold, but the third one is not, does not hold. Namely, let H be the first quadrant in R2, which you can just write as a set of points x, y, such that both x and y are non-negative. And by the way, it's important that we are greater than or equal. So, and again, what does that look like? It's literally the first quadrant. So this space here. The space where trig is really nice, you know, everything's positive. Don't have to worry about anything. So this is H, and I'm claiming that it's not a subspace. But just one little thing. So it turns out, interestingly, even though this is not a subspace, we still have that the zero vector is in it, because both components of the zero vector are non-negative. And also, surprisingly, it's closed under addition, because if you take two vectors, U and V, in there, 
then other components are non-negative, and if you sum u and v, if you do u plus v, the components of u plus v are still non-negative, so u plus v is still in h. So uh, if you have u and v in h, u plus v is in h. So surprisingly, the second property holds. So one holds, two holds, but let's check three. And very important, I tell my students that too, so that's why it's super important to shimmer, to show something is false. 90% of the time, you have to give me an explicit example. I don't care philosophically you argue, oh, it should be false. No, you have to give me an explicit example. Just like, I don't know, in Judge Judy, we want concrete evidence. She's always like, where were you at 3 a.m. on this Friday night? And I'm like, I was making YouTube videos. Uh, don't worry. <laughs> uh, um, uh, I was sleeping probably. <laughs> okay. So we need a concrete example. In particular, here, to show 3 is false, I need an explicit u in h, an explicit constant, such that cu is not in h. For example, let u be the vector 1, 1. Maybe here. This is u, which is 1, 1. Here's the thing. Well, if you multiply u by a positive number, then we're still fine, because we're fine. Because <laughs> it's still in h. But the point is, if you take the constants, they can be anything. They can be positive, they can be negative, they can be rational, they can be irrational. In particular, let's take minus 2u. Well, that's minus 2 minus 2. And that's not in H anymore. So C be minus 2. Well, it's a concrete number. Then Cu. Well, that's minus 2 times 1, 1. And that's minus 2, minus 2. Not in H. Because, you know, minus 2 is negative and minus 2 is also negative. So neither components are uh, positive. So you see, you have an example of a vector in H, but Cu is not in H. And that's why it doesn't satisfy this third property, and therefore H is not a subspace. Okay, you might be like, fine. Um, you, the only obstruction here is simply that points might move to the third quadrant. Well, what if we include the third quadrant? So non-example three. Let H be the first and third quadrant. In R2, which we can write nicely as the set of XY such that XY is greater or equal to zero. Because notice here in the third quadrant, both components are negative, so if you multiply them, we become positive. And again, let me draw a nice picture. This is R2, X and Y, and then uh, it's the first quadrant and the third quadrant. And this is H. Well, let's see. Is the zero vector in it? Yes, indeed. So zero is in H. And you can also check that the third property holds. So interestingly, this is closed under scalar multiplication. And the reason is, if xy is greater or equal to 0, then cu would be c times xy, so cx and cy. And if you multiply both of them, again, it's not part of the proof, that's why I'm going through it quickly, you get c squared xy, but if x by assumption xy is greater or equal to zero, 
c squared is greater or equal to zero, so this is greater or equal to zero. So indeed, cu is also an h. So it is close under scalar multiplication, but now let's check whether or not it's close under addition, and it turns out no, because you can, for example, take points on the axes, let's say 0, 1, sorry, I was reading from down to up, so 0, 1, which is u, and v being, let's say, uh, minus 1, 0. Well, the sum becomes minus 1, 1, which is not an h anymore. So, let u be 0, 1, and again, this is an h because 0 times 1 equals 0, and it's greater or equal to 0. So x, y is still greater or equal to 0, and v be minus 1, 0, also in h, because minus 1 times 0 is still greater than or equal to 0. That's why this greater than or equal is very important, but let's see, u plus v, that's 0, 1, plus minus 1, 0, and that's minus 1, 1, not in h, because minus 1 times 1, which is minus 1, that's not greater or equal to 0 anymore. So we basically have two vectors in h whose sum escapes. So that's why this h is not a subspace. And I hope this makes you appreciate subspaces a little bit more because I know we take them for granted, just like we take our health for granted, uh, but those are really strong spaces such that the zero vector is in it, and more importantly, if you take the sum of two vectors in it, in it, it doesn't escape, like here, and if you take a multiple of any vector, it also doesn't escape. So that's right, those are very, very important spaces. All right, I hope you like this non-span linear algebra, sorry, non-subspace linear algebra excursion. If you want to see more math, please click like and make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.